Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about ISS to Axiom Station, that conversion that is going on right now. So let's dive deep into it. So what is Axiom Space? Now, Axiom Space is basically a privately funded infrastructure development company. Let that be very clear. They are not a launch provider, meaning they are not SpaceX, they are not Blue Origin, they are not ULA. They are like, hey, what the heck you do after you got to space? That's our department. So they are infrastructure developers. Now, they have their headquarters in Houston, Texas, USA, founded in 2016. So not a very ancient company. Now, in terms of their horsepower, in terms of their brain power, uh, they got this. To give you a context, these are the two primary people. And uh, one of them has experience of ISS program manager post from assembly to operation phase, meaning ISS was not launched as a complete unit. It was launched in blocks and it had to be built. There was a whole phase where it was like, okay, block one, block two, block three, like brick by brick, day by day. A very tedious, very slow process. And one of these individuals was responsible for that project in that phase. Then we have another aspect. One individual is directly responsible for making a company that provides that swimming pool. That swimming pool is from uh, not from NASA. It's, me, it's basically contracted by NASA. NASA is using it, but it's not built by them. And the training and all that just so basically they are subcontractors, so to say. Uh, second individual is from that. So in terms of intellect, in terms of experience, uh, they have basically people who are like, we got this, bro. We got this. Like we were the we, we were there when these things were done. We got this. We solid. So they have a very experienced and competent team. And this is them. Uh, they are doing that groundbreaking operation for their new office. And uh, I love the fact that in their media, they have G P high resolution PNG, white and black. I'm like, that's very smart. Somebody was wise in their website that built that. I like that. Again, it's not for me. It's for investors and all that. It does help. So what about their missions? Like it's one thing to say things. Do you have missions? Well, here's the deal. They have partnership with NASA and SpaceX. Both of them are big puppies and they have actually got some serious private funding. How serious? Saudi Arabia level serious. So I am pretty sure I do not need to explain anything further than that. So they got this. Like in terms of finance, they're good. They're good. They're solid. And they have already proven themselves by AX1 mission, which was Axiom mission number one. It was on 0804-2022. And their standard basically went to ISS for 15 days. And be mindful, ISS is a research laboratory. It's not built as a space hotel. So these people were uh, basically civilian, but they were not basic civilians, so to say. So they were actually experimenting there. They had experimentation that was done. And like uh, NASA has a requirement that you cannot just go lol on ISS. It's like, what is this? Like, you have to be very professional with that it's not a stage uh, basically space hotel first and then a research laboratory it's a research laboratory everything else is secondary so they had to do that and they have done amazing job with that so they also got ax2 mission which was 21st 05 2023 meaning very recently and they lasted nine days these puppy and uh, they are two and the third mission is planned for January 2024. So let that sink in. These companies already showing that they can take care of the logistics part, take care of the all the financing necessary, all the regulatory hassles that they have to do. All of them have like multiple national background, not just Americans. So they got this. They have sorted this out. And they do have one uh, requirement that uh, NASA has to agree to it. For example, if let's say January 2024, something happens, let's say ISS requires a maintenance run, they may be like, hey, uh, you have to ship that. Again, they cannot come, you know, talk with NASA. It's like, hey, can you shift it? No, no. NASA takes first priority. And then second priority is like, if they have a space, then, you know, uh, this company can just slide right in there. So they have done missions. So that is a very significant uh, achievement for a company that is so young. Then we come to the station part of it. Now, they are building a station that will use ISS as base, meaning it's going to be built on top of ISS or actually in front of ISS. So the first module will basically use ISS for power and auxiliary. The module itself has some power, some system, but it is not very, what you call, uh, self-sufficient. So can it work on its own? Yes. Uh, will it do much in on its own? No. So for that reason, it's utilizing ISS surplus power. How the heck ISS has surplus power? If you have watched my uh, last few videos, you must have remembered I talked about ISS got it upgraded solar panels. This was another benefit of that. So uh, ISS will provide all the auxiliary services for early stages. And more modules will be added. Each module will have some small sections of a full, you know, full-fledged 
space system and brick by brick as they keep expanding it they will reach a point of self-sufficiency then they can decide what the hell they want to do because design is expandable they can keep expanding it and from day one they are planning for a robotic arm of their own making exactly like canada arm from day one so they are doing it and the reason we are talking about this and nasa is taking them so seriously is because they have crossed the scad phase if i talk about orbital reef all it is is a cad model as of now and other, all other branches, they are just CAD models. They actually have hardware and these are old pictures. They have, of course, they are not sharing the latest and greatest one, but like they are, uh, you know, making chips, so to say, like CNC machine is working. They are making the final propulsion. They are in talks with NASA. All things are in final stages. This was latch design. This is their hull design. Uh, this is the window that they will be using for their gondola. All of those things, like everything is going through a final certification, so to say. Of course, they're not going to share what exactly is happening right now, but they are very far ahead. So the target is they're going to put the first block on top of Falcon 9 in 2024, meaning next year, meaning not that far away from now. So that's the first unit. Now question becomes why the heck NASA is doing something weird like this? Why? Well, ISS has already technically expired, meaning if uh, space shuttle would have worked the way it's supposed to do, uh, this would have been just like bye, <laughs> uh, but it did not. And uh, consequence, politics, failure, corruption, all of them stranded this puppy. Basically, this was not designed to run this long. Now, like, isn't space a very clean environment? Well, yes and no. Uh, it's a vacuum, yes. Uh, problem is, it's an insulator. Vacuum is a perfect insulator, meaning when it goes through the sun side, it gets overheated. When it comes to the clouds, uh, basically shadow of the earth side, it freezes. So that puts a lot of fatigue. So all the structure, even though it's not going through wind, it's not going through rain or all that, it's still going through tremendous amount of cycling, thermal cycling on expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting, and it's showing its age. Meaning things are like, bro, we had this leak, we had this leak, okay, this failed, this failed, lot of issue. Even the, uh, basically, space suits that uh, ISS has, uh, those are also reaching their final, uh, you know, point. So, yeah, it has crossed long, like, it's like, bro, it should have been retired long ago. But failure of multiple projects leads to a point where it's stuck. So at the best case scenario, it can be stretched to 2030. That's the best. Like at that point in time, instead of astronauts working on the projects or all that, they will be working on the station rather than on the projects. So it's like how you have a car in the day one, it's awesome, like you do a bit of maintenance and then it just keeps working. And then it reaches the end of life where it's like every 100 kilometer you have to do maintenance, ISS is reaching that point. So no matter what happens, they have to scrap it in 2030s, maybe even earlier than that. So NASA needs a station that is built to their specification and their needs, meaning I want this, otherwise I will not pay, as simple as that. I want something that works with me. So they have certain priorities, they have certain requirements. So who is the best people to build that? Is it SpaceX? No. Is it Boeing? Hell no. Is, so who is this? Way? Well, OG people, OG gang, the OG gang. So people who have actually built the damn thing, so they are just using that. So this is the idea. The first module will do, the robotic arm will start to attach things and then you will have brick by brick other modules. Second module will come there. Then you will have third module uh, going there and then there will be fourth module. Uh, this is this is the gondola part. This is the final module. This is the power and thermal unit. This The moment this puppy comes online there, then they are sorted. So why the heck all this collaboration is happening? Collaboration is happening is because ISS is getting something now. Maybe orbital reef is an amazing thing, but it's not happening now. And likelihood of it being actually done by 2023, um, uh, 2025 even, it's, well, zero, flat out zero. The basically rocket needed is still not ready. The engines needed still has not reached orbit. Both companies, basically Vulcan rocket is still lol. And uh, basically Blue Origin rocket is still lol. So realistically, nothing is ready yet. So NASA needs something now, as in immediate future. This solves that issue. It's like, okay, at least extension of new things is happening now, now as in 2024. So that gives, that gives the NASA the advantage. Axiom gets another advantage, is that they can start a station construction with lower capital investment. Meaning if, can they build the whole thing? Absolutely. But that would require a very huge capital gain because this thing will not work on its own. They have to launch two modules and launching even one module cost boatload of money launching two of them yeah it could flat out bankrupt you now the benefit of this is like they launch it nasa guarantees them the funds and that allows them to put the money towards the second module and sort out all the issues once they have actual support backbone support of iss and then they'll keep expanding it that expansion is far more cost effective far more efficient and uh, hassle free this would be the interior design as of now i do not think this will happen but let's just see it looks too uh, 
crazy house kind of scenario it's like i'm like nah, uh, um, personally it feels just nah but it is what it is this is the gondola hyper expanded gondola the reason for that is they need private money <laughs> private people will pay money if they can see amazing things so uh, the gondola is getting some extra affection so this is why they're in both are gaining something nasa is gaining a space station now immediate future and axiom is getting a good start rather than going bankrupt or all in on day one so what we can expect in the future well in future uh, nasa no longer has that four percent budget edit cart in like you know apollo era and that's the most critical aspect people genuinely do not understand it's like nasa does not have the money it had when it was like you know the heyday the golden era it just does not have the money it has to run on 0.4 percent or maybe sometimes even less than that like 0.35 percent so realistically they have they flat out cannot afford uh, big and grand things. And as a structure, as a governmental structure, they are fundamentally inefficient. Meaning every NASA engineer knows that SLS was a failed project. They cannot cancel it. They will do investigation. Investigation will send the report to Senate. Senate will be like, yeah, lol, burn more money. So NASA knows this, that in if they have to actually do something in point four, they have to go to private enterprise. So private enterprise have to step up to play it, so to say, and they have to take care of the cost part and private enterprise is really good at that everything else not that good cost the good meaning they are really good at it so they have to do that and for profit they have to do it for profit because they cannot just private company will not touch it if there is no profit so nasa is acting as a seed funders where they're like hey we're gonna fund your 2024 mission 2025 mission we are getting a service we are you know uh, from contractually we are just like we are sorted we are getting this and uh, by 2027 hopefully other stations are also starting to come online and by 2028 when they are like okay iss needs to be retired some buffer is there they may retire it or maybe push it to upper orbit so it acts as a museum I don't know why would anybody want to do that, but let's just say if you want to do that, it can be done. So NASA is acting as a like, hey, what can we do in 0.4%? The answer is not that much. But if it's for profit, private enterprise is like, bro, we got this. We got this, bro. We got this. We good. It's all right. And space tourism will be huge. As of now, people are talking about like, we're going to have manufacturing space. Not right now. Like we will be lucky by 2030. Of course, there will be some extreme catches that is done right now. That's I'm not talking about that. I'm talking just as a thing that happens. Like if I say CNC machine, it's a thing that happens all the time. If I say metal 3D printing, it's a thing that happens all the time. Uh, space and manufacturing, yeah, that's not a thing that happens all the time. So it will take very long time. But what can we do right now, as in like 2025? What can we do in 2025 that will give GG amounts of money? Space tourism. And tourism requires space suit. Space suit. Axiom is building a space suit for Artemis mission. So they will have competency in order to build a space suit needed. So that part is also sorted. So future is very interesting. And if they successfully launch in 2024, 2025, they will be in like very good condition, like good condition. And by the way, each module does have its own propulsion unit also, small one, but more than enough for station keeping and mild adjustments and all that jazz. So so this is the expectation of Axiom Space from now. That's why ISS will slowly turn into uh, basically Axiom Space, brick by brick, module by module. So this was my presentation on Axiom Space. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.